Hello there. Thank you so much for joining us and for watching CNBC Africa. I'm Eugene Anangwe. Now, in 2014, Diodonir Tuahiro left his white collar job to venture into farming. Today, he is the proud founder and managing director of Gashora Farms, the country's leading chili export farms. Tuahiro did graduate as an agronomist in 2012 from uh, the National University of Rwanda Faculty of Agriculture. Now, he is here with us and he's our guest on this edition of Captains of Industry. Now, uh, Tuahiro, first of all, what we understand is that uh, you're graduating from uh, the National University uh, here in Rwanda. Of course, uh, you took your time to study this particular uh, field of agriculture and uh, looking at agribusiness. But is this what you always wanted to be uh, when you're growing up? Because this is a question of, that most people ask when they're young, and then along the way, they find themselves on a different path. Is this what you wanted? Yeah, thank you, Eugene. Uh, that's a good question, because uh, when I was young, uh, my dream was to be a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. I even started the biochemistry in my high school. And then I found myself in the faculty of agriculture. Mm -hmm. And when I started to, because we know we do the exam and then they affect us. Yeah. So they put me uh, uh, in the faculty of agriculture. And when I sat there, I started to enjoy. And now, now I'm happy to be now uh, agronomist. In the field of agriculture. Yes, yes. Uh, now, often many people waste so many years in uh, higher learning institutions only to discover themselves in different fields eventually when they are done with college. We have people who have degrees in different uh, you know, fields, but they're not. For example, we have people who have uh, journalism degrees, but they're not practicing journalists. And most of the time people have argued and said that this is due to the fact that they do not get adequate career guidance at an early stage. Um, talk to us a bit about how that either affected you in one way or another. Uh, thank you, because uh, for me also, uh, when I was in university, I was doing some other side business, mm -hmm. but to try to, be, to get a living at the university. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I graduated, I, now I got lucky, because I got the job in a farming company called uh, Sopirgua. They do pilotary processing and export. Mm -hmm. And then, because I was charged uh, of, like I was an agronomist in the, in the, uh, the uh, company, mm -hmm. I got I got families in the farm, so I like to I enjoy to be in the farm. Mm -hmm. So I started to because I was uh, coaching the farmers how to grow their paella. Then I said, oh, since uh, as I told you when I was in the university, I was doing some side business. So oh, because I, I I want to do business, so I think I think you can do business in also uh, in farming, mm -hmm. and then I. I tried to get information which which sector should do invest. Like mm -hmm. should I start with uh, livestock? Mm -hmm. Should I do poultry? Should I do pigali? Should I start farming? Then I got lucky because my friend was uh, my colleague. Uh, he has started to do tomato farming. Mm -hmm. I visited him. He tried to show me what is the uh, advantage of doing uh, tomatoes. And the evening, as you said, uh, most of the time people don't get people to guide them yes. in the sector. Mm -hmm. So me, the guy, he opened. Of course, he, he didn't have also enough experience. He was just starting. Mm -hmm. But we I learned, I said, Diego, if you invest in this uh, tomato, we can make money. Mm. Then I, I just started with uh, putting a, a, a small capital there. I bought a small land from a farmer who had, a farmer who had started already growing his tomato. Mm. After one season, mm. I got good money. I said, oh. Then I went to Sotirigua and said, okay, I'm not, buying, I'm not coming back. And you quit that particular job. Uh, yes, I We'll quit. talk a bit about that yes. white collar job that you had to quit and yes. go to uh, agribusiness. Yes. But you speak about capital here. Yes. And for most young people, um, uh, younger than uh, your age right now, they always say they want to get to, to business or to entrepreneurship, but startup capital is always a headache for them. What secret did you use to actually source for your initial startup capital? Yeah. Actually, that's a good question because even uh, master, myself, when I wanted to do those kind of business I had in my mind, I approached my uncle, I told him, like, I want to do business. He told me, make a small business plan. Mm -hmm. I remember I gave him a business plan for about 6,000 USD mm -hmm. for, to do piggery farming. He said, this is a lot of money. You, you have to start small. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand him. I just, I just uh, went to back uh, to my uh, job, like so people guys continue to work. Uh, but uh, when I, I approached the other guy who had started the farming, he showed me that even in farming, you don't need to start a lot of, with a lot of money. 
you can start off a little money you can have. Because if you we always give an example like uh, seeds, like seeds for carrots, mm -hmm. they are less than five dollars. Uh, seeds of tomato, they are less than uh, fifty. Depending on the variety, they are even you can get them less than fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. So with uh, that small capital, if you put your time and you start small, you can you can uh, show that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Then after verifying your model, even you can start now approaching people that tell them like. I've invested this uh, fifty dollar. Mm -hmm. I made two hundred dollar. Mm -hmm. So if you can help me and the top up, we have giving five dollars because you are busy. Mm -hmm. We can make one thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So I think uh, first of all, we first to start out what we have mm -hmm. and get enough information. Mm -hmm. Then use that information to convince people to give. Uh, uh, capital. More, more capital yes. or, or inject more money in yes. there. You talk of business plans, which is also very key and big challenge for many young entrepreneurs. Yes. They start off and along the way, it's not working. And, and so uh, what sort of gaps do you see in actually setting up proper functional business plans uh, as far as entrepreneurship is yes. concerned? Sure. The good, uh, I think uh, the gap we have, we don't have the real data because our farmers don't record. And if I want to ask, like, how much do I need to invest in a one hectare of tomato of chili? Because most of the farmers don't record. So you will just tell them, like, you have to find, like, one million you can make money. If you inject one million and it's not enough, then you lose everything. So I think uh, the gap we have is just we don't have the real data. We just Google and, and the agriculture is it's a, it's a practical. You can't use the data from Kenya to Rwanda because we don't have, um, if Kenya farmers or Indian farmers they have their own um, subsidies, their government, Rwanda has their own. So I think uh, what you have to do, we have to start small and get on that all. Because I think the youth today or other people want to go in the sector today, they are lucky because we as the youth who are started, mm -hmm. who, are, who, are, who are educated even, we know how to record, you can provide the right data. But as when we started, we couldn't get some people to give you the right data right. about even those. So it was difficult. Yes. You just go with whatever you yeah. find. Yeah, you get uh, for information on, yes. on, 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 on social media platforms. Yes. But of course, in 2014, you did leave this particular job that you used to do, which is perceived as a white collar job. And most of the time when you talk of uh, white collar jobs, these are those jobs that you sit and swing around in those offices to get your hands dirty, uh, for lack of a better word, in the agriculture sector. Uh, tell us a bit about that transition. Uh, how did you make that decision? What was the triggering factor? Yeah, I think uh, my decision was like, uh, I, I said, if I can spend uh, like uh, the whole day in farm, uh, coaching farmers how to make money, like why can't I do it on, my, on myself? Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, let me, uh, as I told you, when I bought that small uh, farm from another farmer, mm -hmm. I was still doing my white collar job. Then I, when I compared the money I got from after harvesting, I said, oh, this is like equivalent to my salary. Even because uh, I remember I, I invest $300, mm -hmm. I got uh, like to, almost 1,500 after the sales. Because the guy had started to his farming mm -hmm. and he wasn't able to continue to invest in the farm because you know, how to catch it, it's quite more capital, putting some inputs and whatever. So I said, if I can get make like more than one thousand dollar in one month and a half, mm -hmm. so it's like even more than what I'm getting from the white car job. I said, okay, let me even give up this and this uh, go with my career. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not getting exactly what I'm getting, but in, maybe in the future I will get. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why I did the comparison. That's how you decided that yeah. you did the comparison. Yeah. Three hundred dollars and uh, returns of uh, over $1,000. Mm. This was after taxes, yeah, after everything, everything yeah. deducted. Yeah. What was the magic here? <laughs> Actually, it's simple. Uh, the farm, it was like about one tenth of a hectare. So yeah. it was really small. Yeah. And because uh, I was doing, it was tomato. The guy had started, he almost even it was like one month and a half to harvest. Then I gave him the money. I just put smaller investment. Mm. Then we reached the stage of harvesting. Mm. To make that money simple, imagine mm. um, that small farm, you can harvest like, um, we call like, we used to harvest in sacks of mm. 30, uh, 30 kgs each. Mm. The first harvest you can make 40, 40 bucks. Next step, we make uh, six bucks. 
then he goes back a bit for the sacks. Mm -hmm. That is really the money. Because the sacks, I, I think uh, I was lucky also because when you're selling the perishable goods at the local market, sometimes the price fluctuates. Mm. That time, I was like, because the price was high. They went up. I could beat the market, uh, those uh, market sellers waiting for us to bring the, the tomatoes. So I got lucky because the price were really high. I remember one sack of that kg was about uh, Fifteen dollars. Yeah. Now imagine fifteen dollars times forty bucks times six bucks times forty bucks. It's just simple. That's how you made your money. <laughs> Do you consider yourself as a person who's making it out of sheer luck, mm. or hard work, yeah. or a combination of both? Yeah. W w what What do you think is actually driving you? What do you think is is making you to succeed today? Is it just that you're just lucky, or you're just hard working, or actually it's a no, combination? Actually, I can say uh, it also have to be hard working yeah. because you know uh, I've grown up in town. And uh, I never do farming before. Mm -hmm. None of my fam my family that did farming, mm -hmm. but myself I could and I went to stay in two years in uh, Bugesera. It was it's a small village, mm -hmm. Nikashora. Mm -hmm. It's where I started my farming, where I couldn't even get a good clean water. Mm -hmm. to, uh, even the, there was no electricity, mm -hmm. and I had to stay there uh, around my farm mm -hmm. uh, up to two years. So most of the youth don't want to give up, to, don't want to live in the EU, in town. Mm. So me, myself, I said, like, now, because I know what I was getting. So uh, I said, like, let me sacrifice all these things being in town, go stay there in the farm. Mm. And again, I also have goal. I, I always be um, big. You know? So whatever I could get, it never got enough for me. I said, OK, I have to be there. Mm. And now, especially right now, I have um, my client at the top um, company in the world. And when I speak to them, they tell me how they start at my age, we had this small factory, we were here. Yeah. So it's all inspired me and the encouragement to always uh, dream big and uh, right. never be uh, comfortable. Right, never be comfortable is yeah. a very important one. Because before we even got deeper into this conversation, you did speak about the fact that it's important to start small yeah. with whatever that uh, you have. Yeah. But we've heard of young entrepreneurs who say that, you know what, I am an entrepreneur, I, I think big, you know, I, 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 I don't want to have limits, I want to try out everything. Talk to us a bit about how that is either dangerous uh, or, 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 or not good for yeah, business yeah, to go. Yeah, I think, Eugene, imagine those people who tell you, you may find they have the smartphone, mm. which is about even $100. Or even 200, even 300. You tell like ah, capital is uh, different. It's because for them they they want to start a big. If you tell them like uh, you don't need right now, yeah. what is your priority? You don't need this smartphone right now. Yeah. You can sell it and uh, get the six dollar. Convince your friend also to bring the same. You then you have 120 dollar. You can start with a small plot. Just approach someone who said like if for example if they come to me and tell me like Diego we have this uh, 100 dollar, 120 dollar want to do like want to start business for them because they, they are we ensure them that they already buy whatever they will have mm. and they will assist them uh, technical wise mm. so at that at, at that time at least they are sure that i will buy whatever they will produce and they will assist them in uh, technical mm -hmm. i'll give them technical support mm. so i think uh the capital is really difficult mm. but i think uh the, you can start at what you have this is one of Rwanda's leading, uh, you know, uh, exporters of uh, chili uh, products. And of course, I want you to just take us through the journey of the creation of Gashora Farm. How did it start? What really triggered uh, this particular formation of this empire? Yeah, uh, thank you. As uh, I told you, I, I quit my white core job. I went to sit uh, and uh, do business in Gashora. Mm. It's a small village in the western, uh, eastern province, mm. Bugisa district. So uh, I started with tomato, as I said, uh, with that small uh, farm from which I bought from a, a, a farmer. Mm -hmm. After making uh, a profit of $1,000, I said, now let me sit in this village and do business. Because there's no way I could stand guard or pay transport and even do business on far and on. And I, I was using my skills because I did agriculture and I had a small experience with um, uh, where I started working. He said, okay, I said, I have to sit and do it myself. Mm. So with tomato, we start from that tens of hectare. I went to one hectare, I went to two hectares. And then from where I was, when I was two, I was having two hectares of land, I could see now like farmers around me, because I want to have tomato the whole year around. Mm. Mm. 
could see like someone who has small, have small pot I told him, okay, you have a good farm. Mm. I, I think to have good food, then I can give him like $500. Mm. I have more than the, those, a lot of people that like I give, mm. I paid an advance their small plot. Mm. And then I could always take my tomatoes. The, so you were, you were leasing these plots, actually, not buying? Actually, of course, yeah, I was leasing, uh -huh. but there is a way uh, you, you can produce yeah. uh, your, your tomato. Yeah. But uh, when you reach like in the middle, you are no longer, you don't have even the capacity of controlling or yeah. of yes, or yeah. investing. Yeah. So you pay them some, yes. some yes. money to cover then the, the farm, cost that yes. they... Yes, then I would be the one to invest. All right. Then, uh, then I could have always the tomato to take the local market. Mm -hmm. uh, I did this for like almost two years, mm -hmm. um, like because uh, I was intercropping with the watermelons and other fruits, like it was, uh, even uh, watermelons and butternut squash, mm -hmm. but mainly it was tomato. Mm -hmm. But the experience I've gotten is like, I couldn't predict, because the market was fluctuating. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I get money, sometimes I don't get money. They said, someone who did agriculture, especially agribusiness, you need to have a, a contract farming before putting the seeds in the soil. Mm -hmm. It's when I start to appro uh, approach people, the ministries of our culture, attending the conferences, try to see who can give me the contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember end of 2015, I got uh, a contract from uh, an exporter of the Chile to UK. Mm -hmm. The guy, he gave me a contract, and then I started to, to grow and supply for him. Mm -hmm. Also, there was some challenge because uh, uh, he couldn't pay like on time, mm. and also the seeds were not satisfied. Mm. He was just a trader. He didn't have um, enough experience in farming. Mm. He didn't know what is the, the mm. right seeds. He, we could get uh, some uh, second or not satisfied seeds from Uganda and mm. try, try to, to grow them. And when we are going to harvest and we have to sort, mm. there were a lot of reject. Yeah. They said, now uh, let me continue attend more uh, uh, conferences. I, even, I, I remember even with the media, they helped me because mm -hmm. uh, they could visit me and say, oh, this young person, oh, he mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. doing this, this. And then some project could even come mm -hmm. in Rwanda promoting agriculture and export. I was, be, I was the first person to contact. Right. Then I met some uh, NGOs who were supporting, connecting the uh, farmers, farmers to the to market. To the market. Yeah. They linked me with uh, an Indian uh, client. Now I start to get my own contract. Right. Then also, as you said, because uh, it's a long journey to where I am right now, because although the market I could have was to export the fresh chili mm. and dry chili, mm. but there is a, always the second grade. Mm. Then I say, why we have this second grade? Why can't I do with something with this second grade? Mm. So I'll come up with the idea also of the exporting the raw material, the first grade, the second grade, make the, the chill oil. Right, and, yes. and, and this is where you are today. Yeah. What, what has been your biggest breakthrough in terms of business deal uh, so far today and, and, and of what value? Yeah, I remember recently uh, I got contract in, in, in China. Mm. Uh, one was a, it was a, about 1.8 USD. Mm -hmm. 1.8 1 million. Yes, uh -huh. USD, and another one is about 410,000 USD. Yeah, that was the biggest contract I've gotten, mm -hmm. and this also has opened doors because now I have contact people they're approaching with the good same contract from Singapore. Mm -hmm another one from China, so I, mm -hmm. I'm expecting to get more contracts like this in this Right, year. let's talk about this one from China because it's, 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 one, it's, 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 it's the one that is in the millions of dollars and of course I'm sure uh, you're already working uh, on that. The contract is supposed to continue on until May 2019, which yes. is this year. Yes. Uh, what were the intrigues, uh, the challenges, the difficulties, the journey to actually locking this deal that you can share with us today? Yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, what I have known about getting the good market and uh, securing those kind of deal, mm. the secret is attaining the, uh, the real or the good exhibition, international exhibition. Mm. So I heard that there is a good exhibition in China. Mm. They said, I have to make sure I attend this. Mm -hmm. So I had to make um, the gates support from other different uh, institutions and uh, put myself, the sum my cost. Mm. Then I attend the exhibition. So we could uh, make people test our product. Mm. It was a big exhibition. People could always, they are already, they were always full on our table exhibition looking because they like chili in mm. this, that country. Mm. And uh, when they test my product, say, ah, this is different on what we have. Mm. They say, okay, 
Uh, many people came, well, like, even they wanted to, 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 to sign the contract for small pockets, but I told them that it's not available, I need to ship a big country from Rwanda. Mm. Then that's how this guy he went back, he came back, back with the contract, because mm. he, he's coming from a province where they eat so much chili. Right. Uh, Sunshuan is a big uh, consumer of chili. Mm. For them, they, they eat it without even prepared. It's, it's, they can eat, eat the fruits. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's how it, it comes. And so, getting this kind of a deal and uh, this kind of a demand, you are supposed to actually export about 1,500 barrels containing 37,000 liters yeah. um, of chili oil. Uh, did that scare you in terms of the magnitude of this demand and you're looking back and saying, hey, will I manage to deliver this particular contract? Sure. The guy asked me, like, what is the big capacity you can supply uh, yeah. up to now? Because we signed the contract on November uh, 7th. So uh, I told him, like, just give me more, a small time. Like, he told me, like, uh, if, uh, May 29th, you can be able to supply this. Mm. I contacted my people from Rwanda, like especially the government, private sector. I told him, like I told them, like oh, I'm about to get this big order. Mm. Will you, will I get your assistance in mm. this? He said, okay, no problem. We can help you. This is mm. a, a big, big things. The first thing they asked me, like, uh, can you get this chili? Because for me, I wasn't afraid of getting the raw material. Mm. The chili was there, mm. but my worry was that, like. Uh, where should I, where I get the capital to invest in this raw material mm -hmm. inputs and mm -hmm. whatever? Because mm -hmm. we use the oil, we use the other spices, the ginger. So oh, where I get the money? So after talking to my people in Rwanda, they, they ensured that they support. I said I signed. The first thing we did when we came to Rwanda, we have to talk off to our farmers. We ensured to have the, the chili, mm -hmm. and then we upgrade our factory. Mm -hmm. We now increase the capacity of production. Then uh, we, I think we are set for the, the, the order right now. Right. And so as you speak today, uh, you talk of upgrading uh, uh, your factory. You're now able to produce, you said, 1,000 liters right in now, an hour? Yeah, right now you can produce 1,000 liters in an hour, uh -huh. which is 1,000, uh, which, can, which can make like 10,000 a day yeah. if you're working full time. And working full time. So what, what sort of um, capital injection or, or liquidity, or, or I mean, uh, in terms of the money mm -hmm. that you've been uh, expected to inject into your business to be able to sustain this kind of big order? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we don't use a, a, like a huge technology, which could be difficult to, to increase the capacity. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, like four of machinery to, to upgrade. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, I think we spend about uh, 6,000 to upgrade the, the, the capacity of our factory. Mm. And the biggest worry was about where to get the money to buy the olive oil we are using, the ginger, all those things. Mm. Cause, but, uh, and this one, we, after talking to our bank and the private sector, we, we, are, we are now like mm. secure that, that we get the investment mm. to produce the order. Mm. Yeah. And so today, as we speak, uh, as far as this uh, deal in exporting, uh, to China is concerned. Um, what can you report back so far? Have you been able to already start uh, no. the, the, what, the What's happening or? right now? Mm. Actually, this is, yeah, as you said, yeah. we are going to supply 1,500 grams yeah. Yeah. each of 25 liters. Yeah. This is one uh, drill. It's, yeah. like, it's two container once. Uh -huh. So what we have to, we have to, we have to do, we have to be ready for that. Okay. Like increase our capacity of our factory and make sure our farmers have the, fa the, the, the chilies. Yeah. Uh, the chilies uh, it's already available to put the raw material mm -hmm. and the, the finance already secured to, to produce the, the order and the machinery they're ready. I'm telling you I can produce uh, 1,000 liters yeah. per hour. This yeah. means you can produce so now you're ready 10,000 10, liters per day. Right. This means in one week you can produce the order. So the client is just looking for the import permit. Yeah. Then let me, uh, he told me to communicate with me, then we produce the, the order. Right. And so just, just one deal yeah. goes to two billion US dollars. Yeah, yeah. So someone watching us right now and they, they're thinking, this guy just jumped into agribusiness, which most young people are really afraid of. I mean, uh, 55 years old is the average age of those who are practicing agribusiness here in Rwanda. Yeah. When they look at you and they're asking themselves, how can I be like uh, DD, uh, uh, D -D how do they do it now? Yeah, actually I tell people just to always, as we started to start small, because uh, some people, they just see me in Kigali, maybe like stay in Kigali and do farming. They want to start as uh, like right where I am right now. Mm. And they don't want to have capital to always 
to work a distance. Like they don't have system in place in, at the farm. Mm. So myself, I can spend like three days or four days to go to the farm, but I have my supply chain, which is really, mm. and I have a system which is really working. Mm. So I think the advice is just to tell them to start small mm. and but have goals and focus. Right. Yeah, and also have to they have to have the innovation. I told you that how I got two contracts. One is one about one point eight dollar. Mm. And it's about only 37,500 uh, uh, liters. Mm. And the 410 is for dry chili, mm. it's about 100 ton. Mm. You see how they have to even make the innovation. Mm. Although they are starting small, but they are trying to do like, they play on something to make, to make a product, like mm. to bring mm. innovation. Mm. If you, pull, you bring the innovation and you do the value addition, it's easier to make uh, mm. more money. Right. If you compare 100 tons and 37 tons, what the difference? 110, I'm getting 410, mm. and uh, 37, uh, 5 ton, I'm getting 1.8 ton, million. So this US was, dollars. Uh, yes, US Mention dollar. that. US <laughs> it's dollar. not just 1.8 francs. <laughs> yes, it's, yes, it's 1.8 million US yes, dollars. See, they have to start small yeah. and they also um, think of big and they have a, their own version. Yeah. Right. So maybe as we close this particular conversation, what do young people like you, or those in agribusiness who want to venture deeply into this, really want from? policy makers, uh, private sector, what exactly do you want? Yeah, I think they have to, to have, their, have their special programs because mm -hmm. they don't, uh, if you see the policy, it's made for agriculture. Mm -hmm. They need to have the policy dedicated for the youth mm -hmm. focus. Because if you do, the youth don't have the land, mm -hmm. but the government have the land. I can say my side, for example, I have the land which I got from the government. Yeah. But it should, it should to be like a policy where young people have a, uh, innovation who want to do business, it has facilitated to get all this uh, government land, mm. the, to be access to finance. Yeah. As you said, we can start small, yes, yeah. but there is a way, there's a, a level you reach and you need to expand, yeah. you need the finance. Yeah. I told you when I was about to sign that contract, I had to communicate to people, they ensure that they help me to get the, yeah. the pre-advance the pre to, to make the order. Yeah. So if there's a system, to, they have to make sure, understand that the youth don't have the land, mm -hmm. and don't have the access to, to finance, mm -hmm. but with their knowledge and the courage, they can be supported in terms of to start the business. Right. Do you regret not having become a medical doctor today? Yeah, I'm very happy that they make a good choice. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're Donet Twahiro. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us on Captains of Industry. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention. All right, that's where we bring down the contents to this very edition of uh, Captains of Industry. Dear Donet Twahiro, of course, the managing director and founder of Gashora Farms. We wish you all the best in your endeavors. Lessons have been learned, I hope, from this particular conversation. We'll see you again right here on CNBC Africa, where we are fast in business worldwide. As always, I'm Eugene Anangwe, signing off.